challenges. We're going to talk about the challenges a little bit today, some of the obstacles we run into. Uh, hey, if, if you ever heard of this song, uh, that might tell on some of us being older. I'm putting me in that category. But y'all ever heard of this old song titled, I Can See Clearly Now? Y'all remember that one? Some of y'all already singing it. Uh, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Y'all remember that? I can see all obstacles in my way. Wouldn't you love to just be able to see all the obstacles? <laughs> Sometimes we don't need to see them because they'd scare us to death. I'm talking about as a Christian. Uh, this song was written, I didn't get the date of it. It's, it's pretty old, but uh, by Johnny Nash. Johnny Nash. It goes on to say, Gone, gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. Think about this. And then he goes on and says, it's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Uh, I won't tell you the rest of the song, but you, some of y'all, you have the nostalgia going now. You'll be wanting to go hear that again probably. Uh, just to think, I can see clearly now. And I titled this message, I Can, I can See Clearly Now. This is just part two from last week, but it kind of carried on a little bit, uh, car carried on further. Um, for for the born again believer, we spend a lot of our time. I don't know about y'all, but for me, I spend a lot of time trying to overcome my mistakes. I I spend a lot of time res asking God to forgive me for responding wrongly to situations. Now I'm not going to ask y'all to raise your hand on that. I think everybody can identify with that if you think about it, but. We all have situations, we all have obstacles, we all have challenges. Amen? We do. And how we respond to those can mean a world of difference. It can mean the world of difference in how we respond to our spouse, how we respond to our children, how we respond to our church family, how we respond to our neighbors, how we respond to people who do not treat us like we think we need to be treated. And I say we think because sometimes, well, that's a broad brush there. Uh, sometimes we're not treated very, very well. But a lot of times we tend to be the victim when it's really not that case. Or it's never intended that way. So we go on anyway. Dealing with this, this I can see clearly now someday as a believer you're going to be able to see very clearly but right now we are limited we really are but as i talked about last week where, where the apostle paul showed us this example of the veiling of the face jesus has removed a lot of things that that would tend to blind us or to to blur our vision and spiritual things if we'll just trust him and walk with him that veil was torn in the temple when jesus died on the cross and that is a picture for us today of a of a spiritual blindness that and and depending on someone else that we don't have to do anymore we should really be celebrating the just that one fact that we do not have to go to anybody else or through anybody else to get to God. And that in itself in itself is a is a uh a picture for us of the unveiling. We go straight to God. And we should do that on a daily basis. We have such a wonderful opportunity to walk with Him, to talk with Him, to listen to Him, to listen intently to Him. That's where we mess up so many times. Uh, for the Christian, there's always going to be obstacles to face. We have this for sure. And I don't think anybody here will disagree with me on this. We have a spiritual enemy that is relentless. We have a spiritual enemy that wants to not only destroy you, he wants to destroy your family, he wants to destroy your children, he wants to destroy your neighbors and your friends, he wants to destroy anything, anyone he can. And he is, man, he is relentless. He never, 
He never takes a day off. He never goes on vacation. How many of you are saying, well, I just work till my next off day. I just want a day off. I just need a break. The devil never gets tired. He never tires of coming after you and after me. He is relentless. The good news is this. What God allows him to do and to touch your life with, God will take it and turn it into his glory. Look back even in the Old Testament, a man named Joseph went through all of the, I mean, literally thrown into a pit by his brothers, left to to the slaves that picked him up, left him actually to just die there in that hole. But then one, one of the brothers come back and sold him into slavery. All of the stuff that Joseph went through. And when he finally faced his brothers and his brothers realized who he was, can you imagine the shock? Can you imagine the first thing that comes to their minds probably going to be, oh, no, he's going to get revenge on us. He's going to have us killed. And what did Joseph say? What you meant for evil, God meant for good. And that's the same thing that's happening for us in a very similar way. God allows things. He doesn't cause them. He allows some things to touch our lives that we don't like, we don't want to happen, we will never welcome And we'd never be asking for. However, we walk with God through them. We can look back on them and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing that to touch my life. I don't want to go through that again. I never would want to go through it. I don't want anybody else to have to go through it. But thank you. Y'all ever had a situation like that? If you've lived very long, you will. Or you have had those situations. In 2 Corinthians here, uh, the Apostle Paul lays out again a defense of his ministry while he also teaches the Corinthians that there is never a time to quit. Never. I couldn't help but think about uh, Winston Churchill, one of the most, excuse me, one of the most famous speeches ever by a prime minister and really any world leader uh england was in really the the grip of of uh the nazis they were about to be i mean they were it, it didn't look good let's put it that way and winston churchill stood up and he said never 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 ever quit now, he had a lot of other things to say in there. I won't quote the whole speech, but but he was, uh, he, would, he was very powerful in his speech to, to just challenge the people of England. Don't, don't ever give up. That's not an option. Don't ever quit. It's not an option. We'll never surrender. So I got to thinking about that. How many Christians today have went through some rough times, very legitimate, hard, maybe even gut-wrenching things, situations, and they've thrown in the towel. They quit. Quit on God. The Apostle Paul's got a lot to say to that today for us, and I hope you'll be encouraged as we go through this passage, chapter 4, 2 Corinthians. Uh, There will be times that you'll want to quit. Uh, The times that you want to quit, I can tell you ahead of time, you're going to be focused on what you see. You're going to be focused on what is in front of you. You're going to be focused on what is right there in front of you. Instead, the Apostle Paul helps us with that in this passage. He goes on and tells the Corinthians, don't focus on what you see, but what you can't see. Don't focus on the your circumstances. Focus on the one that's got control of your circumstances. Think about the, the one and focus your attention on him and lay your cares out before him. Cast your cares on him because he careth for you. There is so many ways that... Uh, 
that we need to be focused on the unseen instead of the what we see. The if we focus on just what we see and we walk in the uh, walk in that kind of pattern, which I'm going to tell you, majority of Christians today, that's what they're doing. And I have a confession to make to you. There's a lot of my spiritual life, a lot of my Christian life, I should say. I, I'm, I'm sad to say I have been so many times walking by sight instead of by faith. That's really what Paul's talking about. Walking by what I see or saw instead of walking by faith and walking walking by the unseen hand, walking with the unseen hand, guiding me. Number one, if uh, I believe we got it on the screen, uh, if you're taking notes, I want you to see an enemy that blinds, an enemy that blinds. There's a focus on verses three through four. He says, but if our gospel is veiled, here we are again, for, continued from last week. He's using that word veil again. Our, if, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. The Apostle Paul uses this veil, but this time he's not talking about specifically the the Jews. He's talking about just people that's lost in general. He's talking about Jews and Gentiles, those who have not received Christ, those who have not uh, uh, accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, those who have not, who cannot clearly hear the gospel. Why? Because the devil has a veil over them. Uh, that veil is not just a symbol of us being separated before Jesus died on the cross and being able to having to go through a priest to get to God in our prayers. But th- here we're seeing a veil as a as a covering, a blindness. It's representing a spiritual blindness. And I don't know if you've ever shared the gospel with somebody. Uh, if you've ever, uh, hopefully you've shared with several people, but if you've ever shared the gospel or even tried to get to the point to share the gospel and, and just telling somebody a spiritual truth and they just have this blank look on their face, they're clueless. They can't, they can't comprehend it. Why is that? Most likely it's because the enemy has put a veil over their hearts. They cannot receive the gospel at that point. They cannot even comprehend it. And I want to go further here and and make sure that you understand. If you have been born again, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, at some point in time, that veil was removed from your heart. And it was removed by the Holy Spirit of God. You see, no one can come to Christ except the Spirit draws them. Uh, We can't just wake up one day and say, you know, I... I think uh, I think I'll go ahead and pray and get saved today. Now, if the Holy Spirit's working in your heart and that's a response to the Holy Spirit, maybe, yeah, that would work. But your my whole point is you cannot decide when you get saved apart from the Spirit of the Living God. He has to draw you. He has to show you your lostness. He has to remove the veil from your heart. He has to get you to a position where you can even desire him. You see, we are at odds with God. When we're lost, there, there's, a, there's a not only a fence between us and God, there is a gulf between us and God. And you know what it's called? Where it comes from is sin. From the time we're born, we're, sin- we're sinning. We we are sinful even by nature. So this idea that I'm a pretty good person, I'll just straighten up a little bit, I'll make this change, that change, and I'll become a Christian. If you're deciding all of that and the Holy Spirit of God's not working in and through you, you're not going to be saved. You only come to Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Paul is saying, you know, a lot of people can't understand 
the gospel. A lot of them don't see and hear and understand. It's because the enemy has placed a veil over their hearts. Number two, we need a strength from within. Verses 8 and 9 is a focus on that. We are pressured. I, and I love, this, these are two of my favorite verses in the Bible. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. We are pressured in every way, but not crushed. Now, some some of you may have text that reads, we are, we are uh, pressed. Pressed or pressured, same meaning here, in every way, but not crushed. Now, one of the things you need to see here in this is uh, that word pressured or pressed, it comes from the from that whole picture of the 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 uh, someone who had a, a vineyard and they have had grapes and they would press them press them to get you know in the wine press would would press those grapes and what would come out that's a hard question isn't it grape juice right so just as that grape has to be pressed in order to get the juice out of it so is your life and my life as a believer. Sometimes we have to be pressed to get out of us what God wants to have come out of us. The old saying, uh, we're all going to be pressed at some point. Use fruit as an example. Whatever kind of fruit is, is being pressed, what comes out is whatever that fruit is. And unfortunately, if we're not spending time with God on a daily basis, if we're not in the Word of God, we're not talking to Him, we're not listening to Him, we're not walking with Him, we're not in fellowship with His church, with His church family, guess what? We're going to be pressed and some things are going to come out that we don't want to come out. And we're going to have to catch ourselves if we, if we have any uh, bone in our body that wants to be right with God, we're going to catch ourselves going, Oh, God, forgive me. Forgive me for what I said. Forgive me for what I did. Forgive me for responding like I did. Forgive me for acting like I acted. Forgive me, Father. And some of us, we have to do that on a regular basis anyway. Let's just admit it. Or we need to. But I'm telling you, if we're walking with Him, if we're getting all that good stuff put in us, by the Holy Spirit of God on a regular basis, then when we're pressed, it's going to be good stuff come out. And everybody around us is going to see, not us, but what God put in us. You see how it's so, so much more important to walk with God, to talk with God, to listen to Him? Because He knows what ingredients He wants to put in us because He also knows that at some point He's going to allow us to be pressed with circumstances that we don't like, that we don't want. But he's going to allow them. Why? Because he wants to get the glory in your life. He wants to work in and through you. And a Christian that is never pressed in this life is never going to have a living testimony of his grace. Sometimes it's like getting th this passage. Let's read it all. I didn't read the whole thing, so let's look at those two verses in full. We are pressured on each in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Now, some people look at that and say, but that's a lot of bad news in those two verses. And it is, isn't it? If you just look at the first part of those, but it, man, it's like, almost like getting slapped in the face and then saying thank you. <laughs> okay, that's not a good illustration. Uh, it's, it really is. It's more like getting bad news, but having that, but right behind it it's like i don't know just 
you, you, you could probably think of a lot of different things, but I, I think about the, this, this things like you're going to be pressed, you're going to be, you're going to be perplexed, you're going to be persecuted, and you're going to be struck down. Now, if I just told you all that, what like, man, you're just full of bad news. But that word, but, but God, but God, what does he do? Well, he's going to keep us from being crushed. It's one thing to be squeezed and pressed, but he protects his children from being crushed. There's a difference in being crushed and being pressed. Our friend Stephen Holland, who has his Broken Not Dead ministry, he's got an office here at our church, and they're doing a video, a wonderful video ministry. And y'all need to stay tuned because some folks in our church family, I believe uh, we're going to see some uh, videos soon. And I need to start showing y'all a couple of those. Uh, we'll, we'll try to make room for them. I need to find the time of them and, and how they, you know, uh, it may even be some people in the community that they've already made uh, videos of. It's short segments, a few minutes, and it's people telling their story. And uh, a lot of them are really strong believers. But they've been through many, many things. So uh, just stay tuned. We may start showing a little bit of those. Uh, but what made me think of, of Stephen in this, in this passage, I mean, his theme of his ministry could go to this because he says we're broken, but we're not dead. We are broken in many ways. But we just need to admit that we're broken in many ways. But God puts life in us, and he raises us up, and he gives us strength to go ahead, to move forward. He, We are broken, but we're not dead. And when we're broken, that is at the very best time for us to turn to God and allow him to basically put us back together, to strengthen us, put in us what we can't do for ourselves. Uh the but here that I was saying, the immediate but comes after perplexed. No, not just perplexed, but we're but we're not in despair. Going to be persecuted? Yeah. Some people not going to like us because our our stand for the Lord? Yes. But He hasn't abandoned us. He promises to walk with us. Man, I heard a, I heard a, a wonderful testimony. Uh, I think it was one of the Broken Not Dead stories that uh, came up on my news feed the other day. Uh, I just I didn't take time to watch it until early this morning. I watched one of them, and this guy was talking about uh, he had he was going through some kind of sickness, and. Uh, they had put a port in, so it may have been cancer because I, I, I didn't hear the very first part of it, but it, it was something dealing with he was getting ready to go to radiation treatment. So I assume he had some type of cancer. Uh, and he said, everything in me was fearful, was experiencing anxiety this specific day. He said, his wife asked him how he was doing. He said, my voice said, I'm good. But he said, everything else in me was not good. He said, he he woke up just in the middle of the night, the day I think that he was supposed to get his treatment. And uh, he said, just experiencing an anxiety, a full-on anxiety attack like he'd never experienced in his life. And he got in the... Uh, he, he he got past that. Uh, I think he turned the radio on and heard this song, and it was it was it was dealing with this. It was I can't remember the exact title of the song, but it's basically talking about God taking care of you. Oh, I, I remember now. It was a little bit about it was about the fire. It's one of the newer songs, uh, and, and uh, they they were saying he's in the fire. He's in the fire with you. And then it's talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Old Testament when they were cast in the fire. And you remember Nebuchadnezzar looked in and he said, whoa, there's four. There's a fourth person in the fire. 
which is believed to be the Son of God. So the whole idea is we go through fires today too. But that fourth person's still there. He's Jesus. He's going to walk you through. He's going to walk with you through anything that comes your way. So come sickness, come death, come separation, come any kind of trial of life, any kind of obstacle in our way, and he'll let us see clearly if we're walking with him. It's a, it's a strength from within. It's, it's, it's what he wants to do for us. That, that guy's testimony, he said every time he would run out of uh, uh, a, a station, he had been to Nashville, I think, doing these, uh, seeing this doctor. So best I could tell from his uh, story, he said, I had all those radio stations uh, in, his, in his lineup, and he said, I'd go out of one range, and I'd click it over to another one. And then I'd go out of range of that one, I'd click it over to another one. He said, three times in a row, that same song was on as soon as he clicked it over to the next station. You think God didn't have a message for him in that song? Does God use song, songs, by the way, to minister to us? Absolutely. If I don't know what else to do, if I'm discouraged and I don't know what else to do, you know what I'll, I'll, I'll do? I catch myself going over to Psalms, and I'll start reading in the Psalms. Why would I go there? The Psalms. This is his people praising. It's poetry. It's, it's, it's all kinds of, it's prayers. But it's, it's, it's ministry. It's food, spiritual food. So if you don't know where to go, go there. If you got songs that are your favorites that have ministered to you in the past, you get down and out, start listening to those songs. Don't don't spend all your time in secular music that may be good, may be fine, may be encouraging, may be uplifting to you, but I'm telling you, it can't do for you what godly Christian give godly God given songs can do. Christian songs. So let's move on. Uh, that word pressed, I told you about that, but the perplexed means it means, but not in despair. That It's a play on words that means lost, but not lost out. It's pretty neat. Perplexed, but not in despair. That phrase, I said that wrong. It, it basically means lost, but not lost out. And, of course, struck down but not destroyed. I don't have anything spectacular on that for you. I think it's self-explanatory. We, uh, we feel struck down many times. When you feel like you can't go any further, you don't know which direction to go in. But just know you, you're going to be stumbled. And you, you, may be, you may be bruised up, and you may be wounded, spiritually wounded, but... You're not destroyed, and he will not allow that. All right, go to number three. We'll wrap it up with this one. Number three, a, have a never-give-up attitude. Have a never-give-up attitude. Verses 16 through 18 are very encouraging. We, uh, we will face all kinds of obstacles, but we are never to give up. Let's look at... Uh, 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. You, you know how you know somebody's walking with God? When something, when the whole world around them is seemingly falling apart, and they still got a smile. And, and I wish I could say I was that person. I'm telling you, I, it, it doesn't take much to seem like uh, rock my world. But when we look at a man like the Apostle Paul, we look at, and you may know some strong believers. I have had 
some strong believers around me before that I have looked to and I think, man, I, I want to be like that. Where no matter what's happening around me, I can have something on the inside that starts making its way out. And all those ingredients that God has placed in me and in you, and all those days of nothingness that we think God's not doing anything, He's not hearing me, He's not. No, you get along with Him, you keep going, you keep spending time with Him, you keep opening up the Word of God, you keep searching His Scriptures. He is putting good things in you that someday you're going to really need and you're going to really appreciate. Because, again, we all will be pressed. We all will will face situations. We need to have, we need to decide early on, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to trust God and I'm not going to give up. He didn't give up on us. We shouldn't give up on him. I'll tell you this. And I don't think he'd mind me sharing it with you. Went to the hospital room holding Roy Roy's hand before he went into surgery. He was he he had prayed to receive Christ before, but I can't remember which surgery it was. He's had several now, but that one time he gripped my hand, and I'm telling you, he squeezed it hard, and his voice was quivering. I know he was struggling. He said he was, but you know what he told me? He said, now y'all, some of y'all, especially ladies, may not have appreciation for this. I know Mark would because we were on the same football team in high school. It, it, if you ever followed football or, or know anything about it, you have appreciation for this. He said, he said, Kurt, it's the fourth quarter. It's fourth down. Four to go. He said, it's time to cowboy up. He said, what was he saying? He was saying a lot more than what he said with words. He was saying, it's time for some grit. It's time to not give up on God. It's time to trust him. And then to hear him talk, hear the story of him talk, uh, singing, Jesus loves me. I'm telling you, that about put me in orbit. How do you... How do you praise God when you don't have Christian songs memorized? How do you praise God when you don't know how to pray, when you're a new believer? How do you how do you even respond? When you've got a heart to get to God, you can get there. You don't even have to have words. You don't have to have songs. You just humble yourself before holy God. I'm telling you, he will lift you up. He will strengthen you. He will give you everything you need for whatever you face. Uh, Donna and I were talking about, uh, I'm, I'm reading this book on an old evangelist uh, from a while back uh, named Manly Be- Beasley. Well, it turns out in this book, he he was friends with a, a woman that was named, listen to this, Iris Blue. Anybody ever heard of her? She had a had a son named in denim. I'm how much she did. Uh, she, her 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 husband, her husband, her and her husband both. They would just come from really rough backgrounds. And uh, Donna and I were talking about. Uh, I said, "Why is her name so familiar?" I said, "Didn't y'all hear her in a ladies' conference years ago?" and and uh, my mother did, and, and Donna did, and and uh, they came back, and I think may have been my mother gave me a, a cassette tape. I remember listening to her testimony. And Iris Blue was a apparently a pretty good sized woman. Is that true? Y'all saw her in and and saw her in person. Anyway, she had been won't go into her background, but it involved. Bars, a lot of alcohol, different stuff in her background. I mean, she was rough. But her testimony is short and sweet. This part of it is anyway. She said, I'll never forget this part. She said, I knelt down a tramp and stood up a lady. How powerful is that? I knelt down a tramp, but I stood up a lady. Only God can do that. What a testimony. 
So it's amazing. I'm reading a book about an old evangelist that actually did some marital counseling with this this couple, and it turns out somebody that I had heard her testimony years and years ago. And you know plenty of people. You know those who the world has thrown away, given up on. Maybe you have even given up on some people. But I want to tell you something. People like Roy Rogers, that's a testimony of grace. God's doing something there, and I'm looking forward to seeing his family here. He's got a lot of family. I'm looking forward to seeing how God uses him to touch a lot of other lives. He's already, God's already at work in that. He's confined to a hospital room. Wait till he gets out. God is going to use that man. I I know it's, it's going to happen. Just pray for him. Pray for his healing. I told him the other day, I said, Roy, I don't think anything's going to happen to you. I'm not a prophet, but I just believe God's got a big plans for you. So just pray. Pray for them. Pray for Steve continued healing for his, him. Pray for others. Uh, we got a lot of hurdles. A lot of y'all have already been through that. If I had to face them right now, I don't know. It'd have to be God to get me through because I don't know that I could face what I've seen a lot of you and know a lot of you have faced. But I tell you this, and you already know if you've been through some things and walked through them with God, He is faithful. He alone will sustain you. You say, well, I just don't have anything left. Well, you're at a good place because God will pick up where you leave off. And you need to leave it off early. You need to just humble yourself before him and say, God, I can't go any further. I, I just can't handle this. That's just exactly what he's wanting you to, to admit to. He wants to handle it through you. It just may be he's waiting for you to surrender to him. We surrender our lives to him when we get saved. But for some reason, as believers, we don't want to give him full reign. When we get on, you know, we get to knowing our own way and wanting to do our own thing. Surrender, re-surrender to him today. Recommit to him. Ever how you want to say it, but I, you just need to know, the more you surrender to him, the more he has freedom to live in and through you, and the more you're going to be a living testimony of his grace everybody stand brother larry comes and leads us you sing where you are pray